Hello, everyone. My name is Nikolai Kondrashov. I'm a software engineer at Red Hat. I'm going to be talking about uh, this project that we have of implementing user session recording in a way that is suitable for using the enterprise, such as banks or hospitals or just commercial organizations. I work at the uh, common login team, which has started not so long ago, uh, and they're focusing on uh, getting the logs together from across all the Red Hat products and uh, putting them in one place that is usable. I work mostly on this project, user session recording project, and I maintain free radios packages as well. In my free time, I maintain the Digiment project, which is about supporting graphics tablets on Linux. And also, I play with embedded, well, in what le what's left of my time. So, uh, has anybody ever used anything like user session recording before? Oh, wow. Okay, has anybody set it up? Cool. Has anybody been recorded? <coughs> okay. Has anybody um, ever wished that he has recorded user sessions? Oh, nice. Okay, great. Uh, let's see. So, <coughs> the premise is basic. Uh, some companies need to comply with government regulations. Some need to just track contractors or some visitors on their systems. And they need to know what happened to their servers if something goes wrong and who did it. So in in ideal world, uh, people want to record everything that users do. Some, some uh, companies even put cameras behind people to see what they do. And they want to store that somewhere else, somewhere safe. And they want to access that, search that, analyze, and correlate. And they want to apply everything back exactly like it happened when they trying to figure out what happened. There's plenty of commercial offerings, and uh, there are pretty good ones too. And they go from dedicated hardware with you could put, which you could put on your network and plug one cable and another cable in it, and then it will intercept everything provided you, they have the keys. Uh, then there are just uh, software that you can install on your own hardware. And there are things which are simpler, like jump hosts, where you log in, and then you log into your target system. And the intermediate system records everything. And then there are just programs which are running on the, exactly on the target host, which is being recorded. And uh, <coughs> many of them integrate with identity management, with access control, where you can, for example, watch the session and interrupt it when you see that something is going wrong. Uh, and uh, again, most of them have some sort of central storage and searching and playback, of course. But those are all commercial offerings, so they are expensive at some time, very expensive with some really difficult licensing, like per server or even per, per host, per client host. And then it's commercial software, it's usually closed source, and you can't fix it, and you can't see how it works, and you can't improve it. <coughs> so uh, the customers were asking us for something that would come from Red Hat or from open source, just something that they could get for free, and they could take a look inside and figure out how it works and fix it or maybe improve it. And they also want support, especially the bigger organizations. So what we have so far uh, in open source, it's uh, not that much. It's just script, which is the classic, but you have to work a lot if you want to have something central or secure with it. Then there is uh, sudo io login. It is security oriented. It has searching and it has playback, but it's not centralized and you can't stream it. It just writes the recording on the local host. <coughs> and the closest thing that there is is the uh, TTY audit in the kernel, in the audit subsystem. 
uh, which is also supported by ODT, but it, on, it is security-oriented and it can be centralized as any logs could be, but it's only for input. It doesn't record the output, and from what I heard from the developers, with the current um, architecture, uh, it won't perform very well if we try to use it for output. So what we are going to do? <coughs> so the the basics, the basic requirements: record what what's happening, what you can see, what you what the user enters, what the user executes, accesses. Get it off the the machine that where it is recorded as soon as possible, and store it centrally and securely. Then you would need uh, to correlate this with other events on the system, where you because. That, that's the only way to really figure out what's happening because just the recording of the screen is not enough. And you will need, of course, to play it back to see what the user saw. And you need to control all of that centrally. So we had an idea to just shove it with the logs. But because we already have the audit events in the logs, we have uh, login servers which know very well how to deliver and they have this whole infrastructure ready and there is a whole bunch of systems which allow you to correlate those logs, search them and analyze and graph and everything. And that allows us to really save on the maintenance and on the setup costs because we just set up login and we have the all the delivery infrastructure and storage and analytics there. Uh, and it's not just like just video recording, it's closely related to those logs and you can uh, correlate them easily. So we wanted to decide on something to use for that central storage and searching solution and so far it seems it's going to be Elastic Search and Kibana. It's pretty hip, pretty popular and uh, our common login team is working on bringing that to our products at Red Hat, and it's already in OpenShift, and it's going to OpenStack, and we are building basically a pre-cooked uh, log forwarding solution where you basically say install, and it all goes to one place, and it's all parsed into structures, into JSON in Elasticsearch, and you can search it and in a more or less structural way as long as far as the logs can go. So it's a sort of a turnkey solution which is uh, being worked on by the other part of, our, of my team. So we have the central storage, now we need to figure out how to control the rest and how to log everything and how to make sense especially of audit logs because they are not very well structured, they are not ready to be ingested by Elasticsearch. We need to deliver that, we need to choose something for delivery, and we need to play everything back. <clears throat> so we also have a big team working on free API and SSSD at Red Hat, which is basically our analog of Active Directory. And well, it's an open source project, it's just that we work on it a lot. Uh, and among other things, it allows you to join Windows domains, to control domains, make your own domains, have trust relations between domains, and cache credentials on the on the laptops, for example, which you, where you can log in and then disconnect from the network and still be able to log in. And uh, we have the uh, that's outdated. Uh, we have this session. Yeah, not, not, not outdated. We are designing this session recording control right now. We have some solution on the SSD part already. So for actually logging the user terminal, the input and the output, we made a tool called T-Log. And it <coughs> we considered doing it in the kernel, but again, that would have been pretty long process and the audit, audit system wasn't ready for that anyway. Uh, so we made a user space program that is started in place of user login shell, sits between the user shell and the terminal and rec records everything that passes between. It converts it to JSON and then logs to syslog or journal and it also has a tool that allows you to play it back on a terminal. Pretty basic. Uh, so uh, to, to deal with audit logs, to get them to Elasticsearch, we made a tool called O-Shape, and we worked together with the audit team, 
and we are still working. Uh, we made that tool to convert the audit logs to JSON, which would be suitable for Elasticsearch and to XML for other tools, because we have customers who prefer XML. Uh, we build in the schemas, which you can use to validate the output, so it's more or less strictly defined as far as we have gone so far, at least. Uh, <coughs> it just logs to syslog, and, and that's it for now. So for delivery to Elasticsearch, we already have our syslog, which supports that in Red Hat. And you can, of course, install FluentD or Logstash. Or if you are going the OpenShift or OpenStack route, you can use our IQ solution. So for the actual playback for the auditors and administrators, we are building a web UI, which will be connecting to Elasticsearch playing back from there. You should be able to see input, output, and comments, and file success, and search all those. And we are planning to build it as a reusable component, which you can perhaps build into your web UI. And <coughs> we already started making it, and we are starting with Cockpit. Uh, Cockpit is a web UI for managing your servers, like particular servers. And not only just a specific server which is running on that, where the cockpit is running, but also others, but mostly it is uh, just this server. We started with that because it is uh, simpler and easier, as you will see. <coughs> okay, so this is the basic shape of things. We get the terminal I.O. through T-log and the other events through audit D, convert them with O shape, push them to any combinations of login servers, then do Elasticsearch, and then you can use Web UI or Kibana or something else which can be used with Elasticsearch to view them. Okay. <coughs> so I'm going to show you a little demo. I log in into a system which has recording an applet for a particular user. And we will start the playback at the same time and see how well it goes and uh, then we'll take a look, quick look at the logs in journal and in Elasticsearch. <coughs> and I'm go going to also show you how this, the proof of concept web UI works in Cockpit. Okay. Yes, it worked. Okay. Hmm. I wonder if it's the same session. <laughs> yeah, it's the same session. There is a delay between the playback and the and the recording because I started it much later, so it's going to take a while to catch up. We are working on that right now. The, the most difficult part is uh, <coughs> jumping to arbitrary time because uh, yeah, you will have to basically build keyframes like in video because the state of the terminal depends on what has happened all the way before. 
Yeah, that's that's going to be one of the first controls that we are doing. I am just writing code for that right now. That's, so we could, you'll be it's it's quite easy to speed it up, to play and to put a pause on it, but not random, not yet. We have several ideas about that, and we can talk about that if somebody is interested. Okay, so this is the just a moment. This is the locks that came from this recording. This is the O-shape locks, which are converted to JSON already. And you can see the previous audit records here, which probably resulted in the following all shape lines. Um, there is the T log stuff here. This is the these are the recordings of user input and output. You can see some control characters here. And this is how it looks in Kibana. So let's see, that was session four. So here, for example, I look up the uh, audit events with session four, which we just executed, and the T-log events with session four, and I'm looking for the Vim in them. So this is from T-log. You can see the Vim command here. This is me trying to look for that Vim command. And uh, more on Vim command from Audit. Says, um, for example, if we search for exactly. We can see all the all the commands that were executed. This is uh, mixed up with some older sessions, but anyway, you can see the commands right in, Elas uh, in Elasticsearch and Kibana and search them and correlate. Uh, <coughs> now let's take a look at Cockpit. So we can already see our session here in Cockpit because it was also logged to Journal. I can come in here and see it. Uh, it's going to take long because I took long pauses. But I'm going to make a new one. So as, as soon as I start and get some output going, this session should appear on the right in cockpit. There it is. I can come in and see what's going on. Uh, T-Log locks the window sizes, and we made the, uh, you can resize the player here, but so at this moment we are not re replaying the window resizes, we are just working on that along with the playback. So you, you can make it bigger, but we just need to pass that information from, from playback. Okay. So... Um, if you would set up T-log with just the um, just 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 T-log and uh, tip on a typical Linux system without any control from anything else, it would work about about this way. So, for example, take login session on a console. So, uh, <coughs> user authenticates to login via PAM as usually, and uh, it's the job of NSS to tell login that T log is the shell. You can do that by push basically putting the shell into ATC pass WD. Uh, then login starts T log because it's the shell and T log gets the actual shell to start from its configuration or environment. Uh, T log starts it under PTY and then passes everything between the PTY and the actual terminal. 
and logs the whatever it passes as to syslog or journal. Uh, <coughs> if you want to control with SSD, which which was actually merged not long ago, it hasn't made it into any releases yet, but it's in master and it works. You can configure SSD to tell it in configuration that session recording is enabled, and these users and these groups should be recorded. Then when <coughs> a user logs in, uh, SSSD serves the PAM requests and NSS requests, and uh, for an NSS request, it returns the, action, the shell being tlog, substitutes it, and when the session is set up using PAM, SSSD adds an environment variable saying which shell to start. So when tlog starts, it picks up that environment variable and starts the shell. So that way you can have uh, shells and users specified somewhere in LDAP directory or in an active directory or in free APA and uh, don't, don't care about the shells and turn on the session recording somewhere on the host and the user will still get the right shell. And for free APA, we have the plan to use systems similar to SEL Linux mappings where you assign configuration to HBAC rules. And in this case, it's going to be configuration for tlog. Then the SSD on the client machine fetches both the configurations and HBAC rules, matches them, sees if it's the right host, if it's the right user, and then basically proceeds to apply the configuration and passes it to tlog via environment again. So, yes, tlog records input, output, and window resizes. You can configure the notice if you'd like, and uh, you can write to a journal or to syslog or to a file for testing, for example. And you can also configure, decide, like, do you want more inter interactive, more real-time recording, or do you want to save on the extra overhead of the, all the headers and meta information. Uh, and yes, there's, Tlog has a tool that play, can play back from Elasticsearch, as we just saw, or from Journal, as we just saw in Cockpit, or from File, if you want to test it. So this is uh, how the Tlog messages are structured. They are basically chopping the stream into messages because it's login. We have to have messages. Uh, we store input and output separately in separate fields because we want them to remain searchable. They are coming in time at the same time, and if you just store them in the same field, they will be interspersed and you won't be able to search it. Uh, we preserve everything, even if, even if it's binary, and if uh, there is an invalid UTF-8, which cannot be encoded in JSON, then we just put it in as an array of bytes, so we can extract everything. If somebody just dumped an archive on their screen, you can extract that. Uh, we also st store uh, timing with millisecond precision separate in a separate field and uh, window resizes. Uh, all shape is all shape functions quite simply. Uh, kernel uh, kernel supplies the net the audit messages to audit D through netlink and uh, audit D then has a special daemon for mm, plugins like a dispatcher daemon, you can have multiple plugins. One of them could be our shape, which would then encode it in JSON and just log it to syslog. And then you can use uh, whatever login server to push it to Elasticsearch. So we are trying to keep the audit event structure. I mean, uh, all the same names, all the same uh, hierarchy but we have to encode it into something more strictly defined than just plain text. Uh, <coughs> we have the, both the XML and JSON schemas similar. They're just, just the encoding. They're basically having the same structure. And uh, here's, for example, a user executing PS command. This is very heavily trimmed, but basically that's how it could look. And one event can be <coughs> logged by audit D as a series of log messages. They can span several, like there could be plenty of detail about the event, but we record everything in a single object so that you don't have to uh, merge them somewhere where you're searching for them. <coughs> so at the moment, Cockpit UI is very basic and we are resorted to a trick to get it off quickly. 
Synthetic T Log Rack Records a special synthetic uh, recording ID, which is unique on the host and uh, records it as a journal field, so that then Cockpit could request by the all the telog messages and then just aggregate them by recording ID and provide the, this list here. Um, this one. And then to play the recording, we basically run telog play on host. It's a the playback tool and Cockpit runs it under PTY and then forwards everything it sees to the JavaScript based terminal that you saw on the screen here. <coughs> And that's going to be probably the first release. And then we will have to do the um, the most difficult part of making the playback in the um, in JavaScript and browser. So it will probably be uh, some of the terminal emulators that are available, probably Xterm JS or something. And we're going to modify that to provide the timing and the uh, playback controls and decoding and everything. So. <coughs> Uh, there is the uh, feature request that we often hear where people ask for, can we just please avoid recording passwords? Uh, so uh, I'm not aware of a way to do that purely from user space, which we're doing. Uh, the audit subsystem has the TTY <coughs> audit system detecting when there is the echo off mode in the kernel and then not log in anything, but we can do that from user space as far as I know. So the plan is either just turn off recording input, because we are also record audit. It doesn't matter that much that we don't record input because we get all the underlying events. <coughs> or there is an option which we will implement. Maybe we just can turn off the input recording in log and enable audit to try audit in audit and then we can just play that back and pick it up from the audit. <coughs> uh, we are thinking about not recording graphical sessions because uh, we cannot separate uh, easily the multiple terminals that can be started there. Uh, so we just don't record that, but we don't know how to detect that well. We are going to do that. And in general, I think that the best idea is to record the whole graphical session screen if you need to record a graphical session. Uh, then, uh, yeah, there's the char set conver conver conversion because uh, some people still don't use UTF-8. <laughs> Weird, right? Uh, we'll need to convert that somehow, but of course there's going to be uh, mismatches between encodings and uh, it might produce garbage. So we will need to keep the original anyway in binary form and provide the converted text uh, just for searching purposes. So it could search through that. So, and uh, when, if you find something, you can uh, reconvert the binary data to recover what was there if necessary. <coughs> and of course the playback controls, which I talked about already. So all shape, the main challenge with all shape is that audit log is a mess. It's basically built in the, in the kernel. Kernel basically formats little strings, which then puts together basically like prints, which is supposed to be logs. And there are periodically some content, uh, kind of uh, issues between user space and the kernel where user space suddenly finds out that the kernel has changed some format and they can no longer parse it. And the kernel doesn't consider that uh, binary API. They just say, like, well, we are within the API. It's Netlink, so whatever, deal with it. And, well, in general, all the developers have a, do a good job in dealing with it. But still, probably nobody knows all the possible logs that the kernel can produce. Uh, there is a plan uh, to eventually switch to some new binary protocol for audit login but it's uh, even from the most enthusiastic people, it's just not going to happen very soon. So, <coughs> so we are going to uh, do with what we have, and uh, the audit developers they keep the dictionary of all the records and type and fields that they know can happen. But we need more information than that. We need to know the types and everything. So, 
we're going to work with them to improve that catalog so we can make a more strict schema, therefore making it more useful because you can know exactly what will happen. And again, there is the needs to be character encoding conversion because some file names can be in weird encodings, etc. And we'll have to somehow deal with uh, mistranslations and the garbage and encode that in JSON. Okay, and for WebUI, uh, yeah, so we are using journal as a storage right now. Basically, they're just a, a session recording. It's just a series of journal messages. And we need to search that, and we need to correlate, and we need to list the sessions. And so far, with just a few sessions, even though they could be long ones, it is working, but it might work, become very, very slow. So um, uh, regarding that, uh, our team is going to Cockpit, Cockpit Hackfest, which is going to happen in October in Berlin, uh, in the Red Hat offices. If you'd like to come, suddenly somebody wants to come there, you need to write to, to the mail list and ask. Uh, and right after that, in Berlin, there's going to be All Systems Go conference, and I'm going to go there and maybe talk about uh, this journal thing, if it makes sense or not, or we should switch to something else. Uh, yeah, again, the playback control. So while we have the playback done on the host and forwarded to the terminal, it is easier to start, but it is harder to continue with implementing the playback control, like the random positioning, for example, because we don't have the access to the terminal emulator that easily there. Uh, and uh, yeah, to correlate with audit logs so that you could see what was happening behind the scenes, like you would see the screen and the audit events happening as the session goes. We need to somehow communicate the current playback position and that might be interesting. Okay, so if you'd like to try it, uh, an older version of T-Log is uh, in Fedora repos and you can always, of course, build it from source. Uh, the journal support in particular wasn't, re wasn't released yet, it's just in master, and I'm going to release it soon, I expect. Uh, so th the basic thing to try is just install the log as it is, like maybe from RPM and the log to file, and see how it looks and try to play back. Uh, there, is also, uh, there are also instructions in readme about setting up with Elasticsearch, so everything from setting up the user and the setting up your RCS log and <clears throat> how to forward it. And I, we would be glad to hear any issue reports or, of course, pull requests. There are actually <clears throat> people asking for rate control where uh, they want to avoid generating a ton of logs when a person just dumps the view random or something on the screen. So there is a pull request from a student at uh, some government organization trying to implement that. Uh, and I think we're going to do it in autumn, this autumn. Uh, then all shape is even easier. You just, uh, well, you have to build it. And there's actually been a release. It's relatively fresh. So you can just get a RPM and uh, feed it your own audit log. It won't upload it anywhere, but it will convert it to, uh, to JSON or XML as you, want, uh, as you will ask, and uh, you can see what's the structure and how it looks and if it's of use to you. And again, there is there are instructions for forwarding to Elasticsearch and README. Okay, and it, this is the most difficult part. If somebody is really, really determined, <coughs> They can get our proof of concept branch and uh, read the upstream instructions on building and running cockpit from source. They can then install T-Log, configure it to write the journal, create a user to be recorded, log in with that user, and uh, the stuff should magically appear on on the cockpit UI in the session as just you, as you just saw there. But that magic may require some work. Okay, I'm early. Thank you.
Anybody curious about anything? Sure. Thanks for your talk. Uh, are there any plans to implement Elasticsearch support in the web interface or at least the backing JavaScript library? So we, we do not have to read from journal? In cockpit. Or, well, you, I think you said something about releasing a separate JavaScript library for the web interface, maybe? Yeah, there's going to be uh, some component which you can use, and the playback from journal is just for local recording just to get started, and eventually we will have perhaps even in Cockpit support for Elasticsearch, although I'm not sure if that makes sense because Cockpit is mostly for managing this one server and you would log to some other server and then to play back session recorded on this server, you have to log into that server to get the sessions from there. But we are going to do that anyway. We'll need to play back from Elasticsearch and you can use the log play to play back from Elasticsearch right now. It's just that there is no web UI for that. Mm -hmm. I'm just talking about more like a, a central solution for reading or displaying uh, the recorded sessions for multiple servers and maybe not integrated into cockpit, building your own stuff. Yeah, we are, we are planning for that. We just not at the moment haven't selected one place we're going to put this. So it might be cloud forms or free APA web UI or something like that. And uh, to decide that we are actually we're just working it around to make it embeddable, so so it's easier. Thanks. So absolutely, that's our present target. We are trying to work hard towards it. We got the new hire who is working the web UI, and it's going to be better. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, first, is, is correctly that uh, the same message is sent twice: one from Audity, one from uh, from Audisty, and one from your daemon. Uh, you don't have to send them anywhere. <coughs> yeah, but, but it's yeah, automatically but added to your it journal. Is, uh, it, uh, what you saw is mm -hmm. that uh, journal D picks up the, its own audit messages from the kernel. You can turn that off, mm -hmm. I think, in journal D configuration, and just set up audit D, which can then be set up to discard its own messages and just put it to the Plugin, so yeah, but you have to you have to do that manually. That's what I wanted to yeah, ask. Yeah, so but we are going to implement maybe like an Ansible playbook or something for setting it up. Um, the the problem with Elasticsearch is always uh, ev when you have access to Elasticsearch, you can search for everything. So you see everything. Is there any possibilities that we can say? Yeah, not everybody is allowed to see everybody else's uh, recordings. Uh, that's what the uh, that via Q project is working on in our other part. So they are doing access control based on indexes for t various tenants in OpenShift cluster. So they have separate access, and you can control that thing. Mm -hmm. uh, the other question is: It's easy, very easy to bypass simply by using change shell and give me the bash again. I'm sorry. Could you when you that? when you use change shell, the command line and specifying, hey, I want to use bash, then you disable the logging? Is it that easy? Uh, well, if you're root, then everything is easy. Yeah, but no, change shell is, is everybody can do that. Everybody can specify his own login shell. Can they? Yes. <laughs> uh, well, or let's I say it's normally when you don't, don't disable. Uh, and the, the last question is, um, does any regulatory body accepted that or is, is have you talked with any regulatory uh, uh, body uh, if that is something that can for example for a government or banking uh, application that is that ac acceptable uh, well we have several banks like talking and asking for this and making requests and the Australian uh, security services are interested in the audit part so there is some interest. That's and regarding the shell, it's, uh, you can't always do that, change the shell. You can have the users in free AP, you can have policies on that, so. Yeah, okay, thanks. Yeah, my question is, is there any way to make it stealth for the user that is being recorded? Stealth? Yeah, I mean, uh, not him to be aware of it. Because if I'm aware that uh, I'm being recorded, so I behave. If I'm uh, aware that I'm not being recorded, so I'll do whatever I want to. Well, well if the users behave, that's already good. 
yeah, yeah. Uh, but then uh, you will actually, if the user is clueless, you can just disable the notice, and they might not know, but if they look at the process table, they will see that. And another part which you can do, you can set up a jump host, a transparent jump host where user logs into the one system, like a duplicate, a shadow system where it automatically logs him in into another system, and the recording is happening on the jump host transparently, and they won't see that. Okay, thanks. Anyone else? All right, thank you very much. Thank you for coming and for the questions. <laughs>